I like her cure for heart disease. A fire went through her arteries and all blockages disappeared. That's my kind of cure. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Sid Roth, investigative reporter of The Supernatural, here with Mary Jill Klaus. Curses. What are curses? How do you know if there's a curse being activated in your life? Is it some spooky thing or is it just some real thing that you can do something about? Mary Jo, give me some examples of why we might be suspicious if a curse is activated in our life. What could be going on? If you have chronic illnesses or sicknesses and you've been to the doctor and you still don't get well or they don't, can't give you a clear diagnosis, then you can begin to believe that there's probably a curse operating in your, in your life. And a curse comes from generation to generation to generation because the the Word of God says that the sins of the Father will be visited even to the fourth generation. So you're saying four generations ago, mm -hmm. some ancestor whose name I don't even know right. could have done something bad and activated a curse that I have to pay the price for. That, this doesn't sound fair. Well, it isn't fair. <laughs> it is fair. <laughs> now, you don't have to pay the price for it, but you suffer the penalty of it. Right. Because Jesus paid the price that you might be set free from the curse of the law. But that's the good news. You that's be the set. good news. All right, so give me some other examples. Pro if you have financial problems, you make enough money, but yet at the end of the month, you don't have enough money to pay all your bills. It just seems to be blown away by the wind. It's almost like your whole, there's holes in your pockets. Right. Of course, the one thing that will bring a curse on you in that area of your prosperity is if you don't pay your tithes because God mm -hmm. says, that if you will pay your tithes, that He will bless you and He will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't even contain. How about marriage? Could there be curses on marriage? Yes, people that divorce, uh, where there's generation after generation where there's divorces in the family, uh, you can figure that you you've have a good opportunity of getting a divorce unless you realize that Jesus wants to bless your marriage. He wants to break that curse and the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to break it. But we have familiar patterns that we follow and it, you can call it environmental uh, or you can call it familiar spirits or you can say it's just that we're a product of our society. Well, some people would say, well, you, you've you noticed like a, a child picks up a lot of mannerisms right. of their parents. So could it be just a learned thing or is it deeper than that? It's deeper than that because it's a, it's a spirit sent by the devil to try to destroy the plan and the purpose that God has for our life. Well, what about children that don't get along with parents? Uh, there's a, an estrangement between the children and the parents. Could that be a curse? Yes, it is. It's like alienation of your family where brothers and sisters fight or that the child leaves home and never contacts the parents again. And that's, of course, rebellion is at the root mm -hmm. of that. And the devil was the author of rebellion. And he's, that still operates in our life today. That's the thing that we have to fight against. But I know that like with my mother and daddy, for instance, and their family, when I, went, when I would go home on vacation, I never knew who I could speak to, which aunt I could speak to. Because if mother wasn't speaking to that sister Bertha or sister Edith, then I wasn't supposed to, to speak to that sister either because then she would be mad at me. So there's that family alienation and the devil likes to separate families, bring alienation, bring, isolate us where that we can't, he, Jesus is all about love. And the devil's all about hate. And so often we get caught up with the things of the world and the, the way that people do it. But God says that the blood of Jesus Christ will reconcile all things in heaven and earth. And I, at one time, did not honor my mother and daddy. And that's another way a curse will come on you if you don't honor your mother and father. Another honoring them is being obedient to them, uh, 
taking good care of them, being friendly with them, being nice well, to let them. Let me tell you, in this society, most children are not obedient to their parents. They may love their parents, but they're not obedient to their I, parents. So you mean they're opening themselves up yes. to four generations of curses? Right. I love my parents, but I did, want, did not want to be obedient to them. We were raised on the farm. We worked real hard. And when I was 14 years old, I had a chance to go into the city and work and make a living an easier way, which was waiting tables. My mom and dad wanted me to move back home and finish school. But I said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to live hard. I want the easy life. So I dishonored my parents at that time, and I suffered the consequences of it. What about addictions? Addictions, same thing. Alcoholism, you, you notice that it'll go from family to family. Right. Now, sometimes there will be a, a rare incident where you won't know anyone in your family that has on alcohol or on dope. But if you'll get to uh, following back into your family history, you may find that old Uncle Joe was an alcoholic, had always been an alcoholic, never made a living for his family because alcoholism addiction brings poverty into the family. So yes, addiction is definitely a curse. How in the world did you find out about curses? I mean, this isn't something that you just, one day you say, oh, maybe I'm suffering under a curse. I was searching for answers because I went from sickness to sickness to sickness. And yet I read in the word of God that he said, that he is the God that healeth me. And yea, there's nothing too hard for him. I would go up and be prayed for. I'd have hands laid on me. I'd be anointed with oil. Uh, I got the elders of the church to pray for me. I would fast and I would pray. I would take communion. I did everything that I thought I could do right. in the spiritual realm to be healed. I also did whatever I thought I could in the natural because whatever the doctor told me to take, whatever he told me to do, if he told me to walk, I'd walk. If he told me to do exercises, I'd exercise. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you doing everything in the spiritual and everything in the natural you know to do and you're not getting healed, you're not getting free? Maybe there's a curse. I've got good news for you. Don't go away. You'll find out when we come back. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe, then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Mary Jo Klaus. Could there be a curse that has been activated in your life? And no matter how many doctors you go to, no matter how much you pray, nothing seems to affect it. Mary Jo, that's what happened to you. And you had sickness in your life. You had uh, three of your, your four siblings uh, ha had died. Um, how did you find out there was a curse going on? Well, because I truly believe that Jesus was my healer and by his stripes I was healed. You believe it, but you weren't getting healed. I wasn't getting healed. And I knew that God's word worked because he saved me from sin. So I had been healed of migraine headaches by just someone laying hands on me. Well, from the migraine headaches, I found out later, the next disease that I was diagnosed with was low blood sugar. Well, my sister had sugar diabetes. Okay, so I started thinking, okay, she's, she has sugar diabetes. I've got the low blood sugar. And I was told by the doctor if I didn't stay on a certain diet that I would end up with sugar diabetes. And I know that the first thing when you go to a doctor, they will ask you, what is the bloodline diseases in your family? Heart mm -hmm. disease, sugar diabetes. And so I thought, okay, if I'm gonna have low blood sugar and I'm gonna have sugar diabetes, then I'm also a candidate for heart problems because my brother, my preacher brother, had heart problems. And so first I had the sugar diabetes, or the low blood sugar, I didn't have the sugar diabetes, it never went into that. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I followed the diet, I was real strict in my diet, and I got healed. I, just one day, I knew that I knew that I was healed. And I had been reading the scriptures, and so I knew the healing power of Jesus. 
but I didn't think that I should go from disease to disease, disease. So the next thing I started was having angina pains in my heart, and I went to the doctor and he wanted me to have a heart catheterization, and I said, no, I'm going to believe God to heal me because I've had one brother that's already died with heart disease. I've had a sister that's died with sugar diabetes. They both were treated by physicians. They both followed all the medical plan and they still died. He was 43 when he died, John David was, of the heart attack. My sister Evelyn was 43 years old when she died of sugar diabetes. So at this time, I'm probably 45 or 46 years old and I'm beginning to get a little bit scared. I'm thinking mm -hmm. I've got two children to raise. I have a great life. So I begin to search the scriptures and I've come across Deuteronomy 28 where it says, if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to obey all of his commandments, then I will set you on high above all the earth and you'll be blessed coming in. And I looked up the word blessed and it said blessed means to be elevated, to be prosperous, to be healthy. And I thought, I'm prosperous, but I'm not healthy. So I want to know where this is coming from. Sure. And so then I read on, there's 14 verses that tells about the blessings, that we'd be blessed coming in, we'd be blessed going out, and everything we put our hands to would be a blessing. We'd be the head, not the tail, and we'd be above and not beneath. And I said, God, I'm beneath. I am beneath the load of heart problems. And I would go around my house singing unto thee, oh Lord, do I lift up my soul? And then I'd change it and say, it was, that's a psalm. And I would change it to unto thee, oh Lord, do I lift up my heart? I would try to build myself up in the scriptures. But yet in the back of my mind, there was this thing that said, there's something more. And I read all through, he told me, to, the Lord actually spoke to me one morning in prayer and said, I want you to start reading Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14, every day. Now I would read, I read all the curses, I read through verse 65, and he said, don't read that part. You already know what the curses are and you want to come out from under them. And about that time, it had been about three months I'd been doing this and I could feel myself getting better. I got to where I could walk, I could go from a fourth of a mile to five, I was now up to three miles walking and then I got up to five miles walking. And I received a book in the mail from Marilyn Hickey. It was on blessing and cursing. And I had never heard anyone teach on it. And I could absolutely devoured that book. And I knew that I had found my answer. And I look back into my generation and my grandfather had been a member of a secret society. And it said, if your ancestors have been a part of a secret society, occult, the cult, uh, false religions, uh, idol worshipers, then that brings a generational curse, a familiar spirit that knows what your family's like. And that demonic force wants to destroy us, anyone because all of us have a plan, a purpose, and a destiny in God. And the devil wants to come and take that away from us. And I knew as a little girl I'd been called to preach, but I ran from the call of God, see. But this was a time I was pressing into God. And as I read that, I, I read Daniel and in Nehemiah where it talked about Daniel was a young man that was taken into captivity. But he prayed and repented for the sins of Israel and it said that God turned his captivity and, that, and the same thing with Nehemiah, that he prayed and repented of the sins of his ancestors and that they turned the captivity and made even Nehemiah's enemy to give him money to go and rebuild the walls of the city. So I said, God, you're no respecter of person. You love me just as much as you love Daniel and Nehemiah. And so I began to break generational curses. I first repented for the sins of my ancestors, for anger, for rebellion. I first repented myself for the rebellion I'd had since uh, toward my parents. And I asked the Lord to forgive me for not being an obedient child, not doing what my mother and daddy told me to do. And then I began to forgive everyone that had ever Tell hurt you what, me. Hold that thought because in the next segment, Mary Jo is going to pray for you. But wait till you find out what happened when she broke that curse with her heart disease. Don't go away. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter for The Supernatural with Mary Jo Klaus. 
Mary Jones. We left off just before the break. Uh, here, your ancestries filled with heart trouble. Yes. You are told you've got heart trouble. Yes. Uh, you're sure you're going to die if you just go the medical route. Nothing against medical, no. but you, you had uh, two uh, brother and sister that died from the medical route. So there had to be something better. So you broke these curses yes. over your life, and then what happened to your heart condition? Uh, I started feeling better and I got to where I could walk. And about that time, my third, my brother next to me had had a heart attack and had to have open heart surgery. So I thought, okay. Oh I, no. Yes, I thought, okay, I'm the next candidate and I am, and I begin to quote that scripture. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. And I was in a meeting uh, with uh, Paul Kane. Never heard of the man, didn't know who he was and I had on a red dress. <laughs> and he said, the lady with the red dress over there said, stand up, said, God is going to go through your arteries right now with the fire of God, just like a rotor rooter You know what a rotor rooter is? That's I what do. they clean out a sewer line with. And I literally felt fire start right here and it went all the way down and it felt just like something was doing like this and scraping out the plaque that was in there. Now I knew that there was plaque in my carotid arteries, but... That's a good way to die, you know. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and the fire of God went all over me. And r shortly after that, I just went and I had the whole test, the whole gimmick. They did the dye injection, no blockage whatsoever. Got on the treadmill and they said, you know, after 10 minutes they said, get off. And I said, at $2,300, uh, to have this test, I think I'll stay on another five minutes just laughing because it was so great to be on there for that length of time. I was not short of breath. My EKG showed no scar tissue, whereas previously when I'd had an EKG, it showed scar tissue. Now that's a miracle. Yes. Have you been thinking, maybe you have a curse activated in your life? This is your moment. Mary Jo, will you pray for the people? Yes, I will. A curse is, is like a dark, oppressive spirit that tries to hold you down and hold you back. And, but the blessings of the Lord Jesus wants to lift you up. So right now, through the name and the blood of Jesus, I come against heart disease, and I ask that right now, Father, that you touch that person. Let your blood flow freely through those arteries. Open up those clogged arteries, and I command that angina pain to leave that heart right now in the name of Jesus. And that person that's suffering from sugar diabetes and you're having to take insulin, I command that pancreas to come in line with the Word of God that you be healed from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Now don't quit taking your insulin. You will know when you have an insulin reaction that God has touched your body and that He has healed you. Go back to your physician and let Him take you off of the insulin. God is a great physician, but you're under the authority of your earthly physician right now. So in the name of Jesus, I come against allergies, which is a curse that causes you to not be able to go places you want to go and do what you want to do, causes you to have headaches, migraine headaches. I take authority over you, and I'll tell you something else. When we break curses, always I see people he healed of scoliosis. Really? I'm, have you seen people with a hump back? Yes. Almost oh, healed? yes, Sid. I was. I had a lady that came up in the summer. I prayed for her, and she had a hump this big on her back. And as I had my hand laying on that, that hump literally went totally flat. She was all crooked. She was standing totally straight. She had not been able to wear high heels for um, something like 15 years. The next day she came to the conference. She had on little heels about this high. <laughs> she was as straight as you and I and had, been, and you know, I didn't know that scoliosis causes you to have bladder problems and all kinds of intestinal problems. But every year at the conference where I teach, I will teach on the blessing and cursing and I will hear bones start to pop out in mm. the audience without even laying hands on them. Because what you need to do right now is say, Lord Jesus, I break ever curse I break every that has curse ever come down from, it, from come down. four generations back. From four generations and right now back. I loose the blessings of the Lord and Jesus right now Christ. I loose the blessings of the Lord Jesus and Christ. And every disease, every sickness, and every infirmity leave my body. Every disease, every sickness, and every infirmity leave my body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what about people that can't get pregnant? Is that could that be a curse? Yes, that is definitely a curse of infertility. Would you pray for those women? Lord, 
even as before that you have healed many women that we have prayed for in the islands and different places where we've ministered, Father, that you have touched their reproductive system. And right now I speak to the ovaries, I speak to the tubes, I speak to the uterus, I speak to the reproduction system, and I say be made whole through the name and the blood of Jesus. I remove that curse of guilt and shame. Maybe you had an abortion, and that's brought guilt and shame on you. Ask God to forgive you for the sin of murder, because that will bring a curse on you. And as you, He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and he doesn't even remember that you ever did it and he wants you to have children so that they can proclaim the name and the fame of Jesus Christ throughout the earth. And there are some parents that have children with learning disabilities. Pray for them. Quickly. That is a deaf and dumb spirit that has been released on the body of Christ and that can be broken through the name and the blood of Jesus because it is a curse and I they said, my grandson had ADD. I prayed for him. God took him up into the heavenlies. He had a vision. Wow. And God, I mean, he said, he said there was like four black men come toward him. And he said, as they were coming toward him, that Jesus Christ appeared and just went, and the black men totally went away. He's a straight A student. He's now, when you're the, saying black men, you don't mean I mean black, black people. I mean black demons. Demons. Demon, ugly, yes. nasty, big spirits up yes. in the heavenlies. He was, he was up in the heavenlies for about a half hour, walked through heaven with the, with the Lord. I don't know about you, but she's provoking me to jealousy. <laughs> I want to walk through the heavens with the Lord, but I want to walk with the, through the heavens with the Lord always yes. in this life and when I leave this life. And there's no other name given unto men in which we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Repent of your sins. Believe that God has washed away your sins because of the precious blood of Jesus. And when those sins are washed away because you've repented, then open yourself up and say, Jesus, come inside of me. I make you Lord over every area of my life. Spirit of the living God, come inside of me. I want to have an experience with you in this life and know that when I die, I'll go to heaven. That's the greatest healing in the world. But let me tell you something, the 103rd Psalm says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who's forgiven all of my sins and healed all of my diseases. Have your sins forgiven and recognize that he has healed all of your diseases. Those curses are broken and you are whole in Jesus name totally whole I speak shalom peace the peace of God 